Uh, it was pretty much Billy's idea. He's into a lot of easy listening stuff. I like it too. I'd like to do explore some more of that stuff. It's again just something you know, a really hyper beautiful piece that I think was like a real challenge to try and put down. Um, I think in a way some of the softest music that you hear like on elevators or wherever is like some of the heaviest stuff. It's really profound and powerful in a way that loud rock can't be. Midnight Cowboy to me, a friend of mine told me this and I think it's I think it's appropriate to where we, she heard the sat down and heard the whole record. The very first song she said, Wow, this is a really great opening track. You know, it's pretty you know, energetic and stuff and isn't boring. And at the very end when, when the Midnight Cowboy came on, she said, Wow, this this was just exactly like taking a roller coaster, a really great roller coaster, you know, at a roller coaster park to where the first song you're going you're starting off and you're going zoom and then it takes off whatever. The end of the roller coaster right after you've gone upside down and thrown up and stuff, it comes back down and you're going click, click, click and you're slowing down and it's like, oh. It's about a crack dealer who became like Hitler, who's actually black. Chase, and so that really confuses the Chase whole issue. Yeah, it does. international playboy spy. He was because just describing about how uh, the drug affected him and it make him, f him, it make him, f it, it made him feel like, uh, like Hitler may have. My dad's a coach, right? So uh, I guess about the first uh, 16 years of my life, all I thought about was winning. That's kind of what that's about. I think more than anything, we chose Matt to work on our first couple of records because he pretty much let us do exactly what we want and didn't really interfere. Maybe on this last record, I think he stepped in a little bit more and started adding stuff that maybe we didn't want to hear and just things that he wanted to hear. But originally it started out, we wanted a producer that we could work with who would let us do exactly what we wanted to do and who wouldn't interfere with our sound and just pretty much lay down stuff on the tracks and do just that. That's what he started out as doing. Last record, nobody gave a damn. And I was saying that last record was like a fart in an elevator. You don't know where it comes from and you don't know when it comes out, but all of a sudden you realize it's there, you know? And this record's not like that. <laughs> The heavy parts are a little bit heavier on this record. It's much more of a production. And we definitely put a little more of a, a mellow slant than was on the other record, too. There were songs on the last record that you could say, okay, this is a rock song, this is a rap song. It's a little harder to do that on this one, because we actually kind of sound, don't sound like anything, really. Uh, no, I don't feel that we've had to like compromise in any way to make anything sound a little more commercial. That's the kind of music I pretty much listen to is like commercial pop stuff. That's the stuff I like. So when I contribute something to the band, I think that's the way, that's the mind frame I'm in. I think I write stuff like that, just like not intentionally, but that's just what I do. And I think that probably that in itself, just that input right there is enough to like <clears throat> make stuff a little bit, I don't know, maybe more radio sort of stuff. To be honest with you, I think we're expecting to be bashed on this one. Uh, we're expecting that this is about the time of our career where we've established ourselves enough for people to take pot shots at us. So that's uh, that's like something that comes with the territory. Yeah. You know, when you're when you become a public figure, you become a, a target. You know, and we're now that we're you know in these magazines, you know, we're we've kind of to some people's eyes have made it, and then we can take a, some, a good bashing. So yeah, it's a logical step. Last last time we got. A lot of critical acclaim this time we'll probably be crucified and then you know if we make it through that then we'll probably get acclaimed again you know who knows <laughs> That's right it's hard to say you know we were before that we were just happy for any kind of press attention we could get but you know they exaggerated our importance to such a degree that I think that uh, we realized early on the easy way that uh, a lot of criticisms in the press really is a lot of hot air Having, having a round of success with the last record and stuff, I think it makes us all kind of more uh, more definite about our ideas and what we want to be, you know, what we want to project and stuff. And uh, you're not really going to be, I don't think that that's going to leave you too open to being torn apart, you know. If you're doing what you like and what's good, you know. That's the thing. If you do your best job, you know, it it's just a matter of taste after that. Yeah, you can't say it. you did a bad job. You build a solid, you know, 
a solid uh, thing of stairs in front of your house, you know. You might it might Don't look ugly. Flag. You might look ugly as hell, but you can't say that the stairs don't work, you know. I mean, we've been away from like the touring aspect of the music business for a long time. So it's not like we get a lot of attention when we're at home doing whatever we do when we're at home. It doesn't seem like we're really, you know, um, dealing with fame or that aspect of the music business right now. It just seems like, uh, I mean, we're just kind of doing our job. I don't know. One of the best things is, is to be able to like tour the way that we're touring right now is pretty nice. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really affect me a whole lot. I don't, I don't see it as like this big congratulatory pat on the back or anything. We have a lot more attention to detail than we used to. It used to be, I mean, we, we first started playing, you know, hammer out a couple songs, hammer out a couple riffs, and that'll do, and let's go to the next song. And I think now we're, we're becoming a little more particular and listening to things a lot closer because the old songs that we did, we've played to death forever, and we've noticed a lot of weak spots and noticed a lot of strong spots. So, I mean, I think it comes with experiences, and you pay more attention to what you do. But we can't be sure. It's not like people would tell us they don't like us anymore because we're more famous. There's a lot of stuff that people don't tell you, you know, when you do what we're doing, you know. They tend to keep the negative things away from you and not tell you as much. If someone doesn't like us, it's not like they come up and tell us they don't like us. Yeah, they probably won't bother really... coming to the show, you know what I mean? Yeah, they just won't be around. For the most part, if people are into us, that's what we hear, I think, more than anything. It's kind of lopsided. There's really nothing to be nervous about when you go out in front of hundreds of thousands of people, unless they all hate you. Uh, well, even if they do, I mean, you're going to go out and they're going to hate you even if you're good, or they're going to love you if they love you even if you're not quite spot on. You know, uh, there's really no reason to be nervous. We're pretty comfortable playing these size venues too. I mean, because we started in really, really small clubs and worked our way up really gradually. It wasn't like all of a sudden overnight here we were in front of a hundred thousand people playing shows. And we started off in really small clubs, and then we started playing some theater stuff, and then once or twice we'd get a favor and get to open up for a bigger band. So in that way, the the move up was really gradual and pretty easy going. It's not like it was a big shock when all of a sudden we were in front of a big number of people. So it's pretty comfortable. We went to play in Athens, Georgia, and it was during finals week or something of school, and two people showed up, and that's because some people we met in Atlanta told them, called them up and told them to come and see us. We'd get them in for free. And we had driven like 12 hours to the show that day to play it. And we called the promoter on the way, and he goes, oh, you guys are coming? Well, everybody's in finals, okay. Well, okay, come on. That was a pretty bad show. We played some pretty rotten shows. We made $2. <laughs> One of the guys that came bought a beer. I don't think humor is so important, no. I mean, a lot of things make me laugh that I'm sure wouldn't make a lot of other people laugh. We do stuff as a band, I think, that to us is really funny, but to the rest of the world, I don't think it's very funny. I think in that sense, it's probably pretty, pretty important. But as far as making people laugh, I don't see that as very important at all. I mean, it's fun, I think, to keep yourself entertained when you're doing something for as long as we've been doing this, in that sense. But as far as making other people laugh, no, I don't think that's important. Hi, we're Faith No More. You're listening to a new track on our new album. Angel Dust! Angel Dust, yeah! Hi, my name's Roddy. I'm from Faith No More. This is a new song from our new record. Hope you enjoy it. Hi, this is Jim from Faith No More. Listen to this.